It's a question I love to ask people when I meet them. If you could go anywhere and do anything, there are no limits, no nothing to stop you from doing what you really dream of doing. What would you do and where would you go? An ape car. I'd love to get one of those. I've always been a storyteller ever since I taught myself to read when I was three years old. And I think I probably started telling stories even before that. I feel like a lot of experiences and moments in my life don't feel real to me until I share them with somebody. And photography is kind of a natural extension of that for me. <laughs> I don't think this goes anywhere. You can see the chimney and how it like just stops just before the rock and all the rock is burnt above it. My doctors had also told me I'd never be able to work a full-time job and they'd been trying to get me to quit the office job for a long time but I didn't know what else to do and then the photography was sort of taking off naturally and I don't know, it just worked. Now I just follow my work around. So I'm used to that and in your face and like, oh, cute garden, I'm gonna take a photo even though that's somebody's front door. In Japan, I was like, oh, cute garden. And my brother's like, the fuck are you doing? Get out of there, that's somebody's private property. I'm like. I didn't think it was something that I, as a person with the health condition that I have, could ever do. I was meant to be in a wheelchair by now, like completely dependent on help from people. Oh, no, we parked up here. The fancy car tells Google Maps where I parked. I have a condition called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It's a genetic connective tissue disorder that basically affects all the soft tissue in your body. Now we're gonna go find this fishing structure thing that's typical of this area. It started with joint pain. I remember when I was five years old, I was running and I remember saying to one of the girls in my class, don't you hate it how when you run, your knee clicks and jams up and you can't move anymore? And she was like, no, nope, that's never happened to me. This is one of those situations where like, I'm sure the view will get better as I go down, but I can't help myself. There were a lot of other symptoms, which now we recognize that they were symptoms. But at the time it was really my joint pain was the main thing. And it was complaints of pain and pain and pain and pain. That storyline just kind of continued up until the point when I was 19 years old, when I finally got the diagnosis. And by this stage, I'd had a lot of other health issues. But then I met the surgeon who sent me to the med scientist and they put me on these supplements and everything changed. With Ehlers-Danlos, the slightest wrong movement can lead to a dislocation. And if you dislocate, it's a chain reaction. If my feet go, then my knee goes, and my hip goes, and my back goes. And it's just this whole knock-on effect and it's just a whole mess and then I'm out of it and I can't do my work and I can't take care of myself and you have to be so controlled with EDS. You have to think about how you're walking, you have to think about how you're sitting, you have to think about not keeping your posture too much up straight because then your muscles will get sore and your muscles are already sore because they're the only thing holding you together whereas everybody else has tendons and ligaments that function. Anyway, that makes me happy to see some greenery after so long of no greenery and it's just a never-ending balancing act. 0 0.5 filming thing, so it helps give a little bit more. Oh, you mean the wide angle? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a photographer. <laughs> I'm driving up without you now. <laughs> when you go through something really hard, you're presented with two choices. You give up, and then it's all over anyway. Or you figure out a way to keep going and you keep going. Oh my God. <laughs> because of what I've experienced and what's been thrown at me, I just kind of pick myself up and dust myself off. and I give myself a time limit now on how long I'm allowed to be sad for and then I go, okay, that's over. <laughs> up we get, let's go. Every single little thing that happens to us changes the way we tell a story. And it's like this strange little tick that I think we all have that we just, we find that importance and we you know, project it in some way. Growing up with this health condition where so many people were constantly telling me that 
I wasn't able or I shouldn't or I couldn't or I wouldn't or they didn't believe me. There were so many people, you won't be able to do this, you won't do that, you can't do this, you have to sit down, you have to stay still, you're going to get injured, you're going to get hurt. Oh, this is my kind of place. Wheat. This is where my osteopath sees me and is like, the fuck were you doing with your knees? I think it makes me pretty keen to make every person the hero of their own stories. If you could go anywhere and do anything, there are no limits, nothing to stop you from doing what you'd really dream of doing. What would you do and where would you go? Right now, in this moment, it's what I'm doing, 100%. I can't get over it.